Okay, thank you. Thank you. So I think we can start, yes. Uh, as you can see on the screen, uh, I will talk about creating games using Blender and Blend for Web. And my name is Mikhail Zain, I'm from Blend for Web team. I hope you're already familiar with the Blend for Web engine. Uh, please hands up who never heard about uh, Blend for Web. So. <laughs> a lot of people. Uh, I hope uh, my presentation uh, will help you to see what it, uh, what is it, <laughs> Blend for Web Engine. And um, uh, I'm a leader artist, uh, le uh, lead artist from Blend for Web team. And I'm in charge of making uh, visual content for uh, demo scenes and applications. And um, uh, some of you who are already familiar with uh, Blend for Web Engine, I hope already seen one of my favorite uh, application uh, made uh, with uh, Blend for Web Engine. We called it Petigor's Tale Game. And uh, if you're not familiar, you can follow this link uh, even uh, right now using your mobile phone. It's work uh, directly in browser. You can test it. What, uh, and uh, later I will show you uh, it here. Uh, but today I will focus my uh, presentation uh, on uh, a new chapter uh, of this game. We called it uh, Pettigrew's Tale Quest. It's a simple quest, uh, uh, like uh, there was a lot of them in 90s, uh, it's just simple point and click quest, and I'll create it uh, using uh, only a uh, logic node system, our own blend for web logic node system, without uh, using a uh, programming uh, And now I sh I'll show you. Uh, at first, I'll show you a particular style uh, game. I open it, it directly in browser, as you can see. Oh, there's a sound. <laughs> So, uh, as you can see, it's a full 3D scene. Uh, I can move mouse around here. And uh, here's load additional, uh, loading additional uh, objects for the scene. So it's separated. Now you can see the uh, screen saver of uh, main menu. It's uh, very long, so we just skip it. Uh, I can push a button to show you a game process. It's difficult to play with touchpad, so I just run a little. So it's a, a simple arcade, I think. It's not uh, a comp. Um, it's nothing to tell about the gameplay here, but it runs uh, directly in browser. And now I want to show you without any plugin. It's uh, WebGL. Nothing need to install on your browser or something. Just run it, and so. So I can hear you. Uh, ah, it's a single. <laughs> yes. And uh, here you can see uh, a new chapter. You can find uh, it on our site yet because we're still working on it. it will, and we will release it uh, at the end of this month, I hope. <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, it's a simple pattern request. Here you can see an inventory in the bottom of the screen where you can choose uh, what uh, you want from character to do. So you can choose a hand, or eye, so character. You can point on different object, and a character can pick up this or look at this. So it's a really simple thing. There's a lot of them, a lot of uh, that kind of games uh, made by Telltale games, for example, and so on. And uh, I'll show you this scene in Blender. Yes, this uh, this is a logic tree that create all this logic in the game, but not <laughs> all. Here is another logic tree. So, and uh, before I start to explain all of these uh, nodes, uh, I, I want to uh, give you basics of blend uh, blend for web logic node tree system. And before that, I want to talk about uh, a difference between a Blender game engine and Blend for Web engine. It's a little boring, I know, but uh, I need to do this because some people, uh, some user, uh, Blend Blender users on different forums, uh, thinks that Blend for Web is just an exporter for Blender game en engine, and it's not true. Uh, because uh, these uh, projects are really uh, different and they uh, develop it separately. Uh, they have uh, some cross sections between uh, them, but uh, they are really uh, not uh, related to each other. And one of uh, first first point uh, to compare its uh, scene structure. So uh, both of them, both of this, these engines uh, use uh, Blender scene structure to maintain the scenes. So they uh, use this uh, rela uh, relationship between objects, animation, materials, as it done in Blender scene. And next point, it's uh, material. So both of them use uh, Blender internal render material for the materials as base for the materials. But blend for web add uh, some special nodes, we call them blend for web special nodes, to increase possibilities uh, of material uh, creation. Uh, uh, next point, it's a viewport. Uh, both of them use uh, Blender JLSL viewport to prepare the scenes. Uh, next point, it's post-processing. Uh, both of them use uh, their own post-processing, so they're completely different. Uh, some of post-processing uh, similar to Blender post-processing. For example, DOF, they look similar, but uh, we add uh, some uh, additional uh, preferences to increase uh, possibilities to set up this uh, effect. Um, so, uh, but they are really completely different. And uh, another point, uh, it's a very important point for my presentation today, it's a logic system. So Blender Game Engine, uh, you use uh, its own uh, game logic system and Blend for Web Engine uh, um, made its own uh, lo logic node system, and they are completely different. And next point, it's a physics. Both of them use bullet physics engine. Uh, next point, it's a API. Uh, as you may know, Blender Game Engine use Python API, and Blend for Web uh, use JavaScript API uh, because it uh, runs directly in browser. So uh, if you need to add uh, so, uh, to add some code 
or uh, to write a script for uh, API. In Blender Game Engine, you will use Python. In Blend for Web, you will use uh, JavaScript. And final and uh, very important point, it's a uh, result that you will get when you finish your project. In Blender Game Engine, you will uh, open it in Blender Player, OpenGL Blender Player uh, with Blend file. And um, in Blend for Web, you will uh, get a WebGL JavaScript application with a JSON file which you can put on a server and every, uh, any user can open it uh, from your server directly with your browser. And now I'm, I want to start with some basics of uh, Blend for Web Logic Node System. So uh, here you can see some of very important and most often used uh, logic nodes. It's, it's enough, yeah? uh, Here you can see an entry point. It's a root for each uh, logic tree. Uh, you can create a multiple amount of uh, unlimited amount of logic trees, but every logic trees you will need to start from this uh, logic node. And every node that will connect to this tree will create uh, this tree. Another very important, uh, lo a very important logic node. It's a switch select node. Uh, this node will wait from uh, a user uh, when he click on a specific object that uh, added to this list. So, for example, I'll add cube to this list that already exists on the scene, connect this to entry point, and when I'm run, oh, sorry. Something going wrong. Yes, it's okay. Well, then I'll use Sorry for that. <laughs> I'll use mm. Alexander. Can you help me? Sorry. <laughs> What's going on with the exporter? It's an Alexander, our programmist. <laughs> You can <laughs> uh, see his uh, speech a little later in two, in four, 14, I think, 14. Just to another. Okay. Ah, OK. So, sorry, I need to switch to another SDK. It will take a few minutes. We prepared hard but not so hard, <laughs> as you can see. <laughs> mm. It will take a few minutes. As you can see, it's a Mac book, but it's uh, with Ubuntu, so it's like a monkey with bomb. <laughs> so we can't expect anything from this. So this is a demonstration of problem solving. <laughs> oh, so you, you can show hmm. how to, um, to connect the blend for the SDK to the ah, Okay. Uh, 
Okay. I'll show you how to connect as the key. Blender blend for web is the key to Blender. So we need just uh write here a path to the SDK. So I downloaded an SDK. I'll choose here a path, save uh, user settings, and reload Blender. And now I'll test it. Oh, yes, it's OK. Run perfectly. I think something just happened while we are extracting or something. Maybe correct. So I'll continue. Thank you, Alexander. Uh, sorry, can can you hear? Size of interface. Size of interface? Yes, it's so small. Fine. Three. You mean uh, I need to? Yeah, I mean DPI. I DPI in my. No, it's uh, HD quality. It's Ah, to read. No, I will uh, zoom some of notes, okay? I can do with this <laughs> anything more. So as uh, I already started, I just added a cube here, connected to entry point node. It's quite enough to see, okay. I add here a cube, and now uh, my application will wait for me when I am click on the cube. So I click on the cube. Nothing ha happens uh, because I haven't connected anything to this output. So uh, to see something, uh, I need to connect this output, and I want to introduce you another node. It's called Play Animation Node. It can play uh, any animation on any object that uh, will select it in this list. And I'll add a cube to this list, connect to this output. So uh, when user click on the cube, uh, this node will pass logic through this output with uh, name of this object. And all nodes that connected to this output will uh, proceed. And I'll add a simple animation. For this cube, I move it a little up, and now I'll run my application. And when I click on the cube, it starts to move. It's very simple. And uh, another two very important nodes, uh, it's a variable store node. Uh, this node can create a new var uh, variable with uh, a specific name. For example, I create a new variable with name click and set uh, a value of 1 to it. And uh, I need to create a sphere to show how this work to show how this node works. And I'll add this queue, uh, this sphere to a switch select node. So uh, this node will wait from uh, the user when he click on the sphere, and I'll connect a sphere output to variable variable store node. And I also need to cycle this uh, logic on switch select node. Uh, so when uh, the user click on the sphere, it will uh, play this node, variable store node, and it will create uh, a variable with name click, and it will return a logic to uh, switch select node. So this node will wait for another action from it, the user. And uh, the next node is, uh, to see how this uh, node works, we need uh, another node called conditional jump node. This uh, node will uh, compare any variable uh, with uh, any value that you will enter here. So just connect uh, this node between uh, switch select and play animation node. Add a variable click here and compare it to one. 
So uh, when uh, I'll uh, click on the cube, uh, logic will pass to the first output. A conditional job node will check is uh, variable click equal to one, and if it's true, it will pass th through the first output, and play animation node will start play animation. And I'm also need to cycle this logic on switch select node, so it will return. And if it falls, I also need to cycle this on switch select node, so if if uh, the user click on the cube and conditional jump will check uh, this variable and it, and uh, this variable is not equal to one, it will false and all logic will stop. But now it will cycle to, uh, it will return to switch select node. And let's test this setup. As you can see, when I click on the cube, nothing happens because uh, conditional jump uh, passed logic through false output. And when I click on the sphere at first and then click on the cube, logic uh, start to play animation. Another two very important nodes, it's hide uh, object and show object uh, nodes. As you can see by the name, uh, one of them hide any object on the scene and another reveal any object on the scene. So just connect them to this tree branch. So I will hi hide uh, a cube after animation will be played. And I'm also create here a cone at the end of cube moving. And I need to set a hidden checkbox on it, so it will be hidden after the application will start. And here at the end of this uh, logic uh, branch I will reveal it. So I'll start an application. First I need to click on the sphere, then on the cube. Cube start to move. And at the end it hi was hidden and uh, the cone was revealed. So uh, that's how the logic nodes works. It's the basics of it. And uh, let's look at more complex example. Uh, before we start talking exactly about particular style quest, I need to show you another example. Uh, it's uh, here you can see a simplified uh, version of a Pettigrew style uh, project. Here you can see a structure of it. In uh, base of this project, you, uh, you can see a material and texture library blend file where all material and textures. Uh, where all textures and some shared materials can be located. So can, here you can see a few textures that will be linked to some of uh, project uh, parts. In the middle of uh, this structure you can see different uh, assets and wayfix and characters uh, files that will be linked, linked in, into uh, final scene. So here you can see some uh, uh, scene assets that just uh, located on different layers. Oh, there's no sun, sorry. And uh, each of them added to a special group. So I will link each object using double groups and also shared materials like this. And here you can all you also can see you see okay <laughs> uh, here's the character model. Uh, in this group also added uh, 
its armature and as you can see uh, he already have a hammer in his hand that also added to his group near this uh, blend file you can see a file with animation for this character for example I already made a simple animation for the for this character where he picking up a hammer and from these assets I'll create a simple scene so using link and groups I'll add these boxes around Ubuntu <laughs> ah, I love Ubuntu <laughs> but not not a unity desktop then I'll add some another sets sorry maybe it's so boring no no it's okay I'll try and to do it quickly oh, I don't want to move this so I'll just put these things around If you're tired, try, tired, feel free to sleep a little. So um, I'll put it somewhere here. And now I'll connect a character to this scene using groups. So it's in the center of all seen. I'm also create proxy for its armature to test uh, an animation, and we'll set don't export on it, so it will be not exported to the engine. Now I'll link. Actions. So h h here you can see um, different type of actions. This is a simple action for this character. Uh, character's armature has an uh, inverse uh, kinematic in it, uh, but uh, Blend for Web Engine uh, hasn't support inverse kinematic yet and it's need to bake this animation using blend for web uh, special baker tool to bake it directly to deform bones so here you can see uh, two animations with the same name it's uh, animation that created using IK and animation that uh, baked but I need uh, both of them in Blender I will use uh, animation with IK but uh, engine will uh, replace the, uh, this animation uh, by baked animation when I will export it automatically so just link them and just add animation to proxy. So here you can see simple idle animation for this character. He moves a little. And now I'll create a logic, a, a logic to create interactivity for this application. I'll switch 
this checkbox in scene preferences then create new logic tree and it's already with entry point so I'll, I can start a new logic tree and now I'll add not this node I'll add at first play animation node I'll select here a farmer mail group. In this farmer mail group I'll select uh, farmer mail armature. So the animation will be played on farmer mail armature. And I'll need to type the name of animation I want to be played. I just copy and paste it here and I'll set a loop on it so this uh, animation will be looped and play it cycling and now if all all right let's test it oh it's run <laughs> so here you can see that's uh, character moves a little, animation played, and now uh, let's add simple interactivity to it. I also have a... Uh, hmm? yeah. uh, baked version of the action uh, changed automatically. Yes, en engine takes uh, bake it version by itself. So I need to work only with usual animation and always will see what I made. And uh, now I want to add some interactivity. I have a farmer mail picking up a hammer animation where farmer picking up a hammer and somewhere in the middle as you can see he already have a uh, hammer in his hand so I need uh, to put this hammer that laying located on the ground somewhere here So it will be looks like he picking up a hammer from this place. Now I'll add a switch select node. So this node will wait from a user when he click on the hammer. I'll add hammer here. And I'll add play animation node that will play an animation on a character where he picking up a hammer. I'll write it, type it right here. So let's test it. So character just standing. Now I click on the. Oh, I think it's cache. Mm. It's always problem with cache. Sometimes loads uh, the previous export. So I need just to open a console. I hope this all okay with this. Yes. Mm. Sorry. Yes, I set up. Don't export on it. Maybe I'm wrong with the name. No, it's okay. 
select to switch on hammer it's also kicking another run oh okay it's a, it, it was a cache so uh, this looks like a uh, character picking up a hammer but uh, this hammer still on the ground and this hammer still in his hand even when he started to picking up a hammer and now I need to mix them at the beginning of the scene scene I'll hide a hammer that laying on the ground and when character picking up a hammer I'll hide hammer that directly in his hand already and reveal hammer uh, stop I'll ha hide a hammer uh, that in his hand at first sorry sorry Yes, I I mixed a little. I trying to fix this. <laughs> so at first I need to hide a hammer that uh, in the hands of the character, in the hand of the character, and I need to hide a hammer that laying on the ground, and reveal the hammer that uh, in character hands. Ah, it's another high level. Sorry, I see. Mm -hmm. So now I hope it's okay. Sorry about that, are you really, are really nervous? Because it's my first conference. Nah. Okay, now it's right. We'll done it together. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> I had not <laughs> right. So so I need to hide a hammer in the hands of character. Oh, I hope. Mm. Now it's okay. So uh, as you can see, the hammer in his hand are hidden, and now I click on hammer. It won't work again something wrong so it's key like here 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 so cash yes it was cash so as you can see it picked up a hammer no it's okay it was <laughs> and uh, uh, I'll explain why it was happened because uh, here you can see a special checkbox that uh, called do not wait so uh, this note was uh, these notes was played after this animation was uh, finished to be played and I need to set a checkbox uh, here and add a little delay between these notes for example 2.5 I already prepared this number. <laughs> so this note will uh, ask this node to wait a little before do their things. And now I'll export this. I hope no cache. No, it's oh, it's okay. No cache. 
So as you can see, character picked up a hammer. Oh. Mm, okay, yes. Uh, for now, yes. <laughs> but we, uh, it's uh, still, uh, this logic still in uh, development process, so we improve uh, this logic every month. And I just show, I just want to show you today what we already implemented. So now you can create using this logic uh, some uh, simple uh, point and click quest. So we haven't implemented uh, parenting, uh, dynamic parenting still. So it will be needed to allow us, um, character to pick up a multiple uh, objects and uh, you will need you won't need to put it in his hand and now um, if you understand how it works I start to explain how uh, Pettigrew style quest was made I'll open the scene. I'll open the Pettigrew style quest scene again. As already said, it's a simple point and que uh, click quest, and uh, character can interact with different different objects. So I can pick up this pestle on the ground and it will shown in his inventory and now I can choose the pestle and uh, try to use it on different objects in this scene for example I can use it on the keys no he don't want to use it on the keys or maybe on the cage no <laughs> so I can use it for example on this hook he will throw this pestle to the hook and it will drop near the character. So all these things uh, can be possible using only logic nodes. And uh, it's done the same as uh, in example that I already shown you. But uh, so I will not explain uh, every node in this logic. I'll uh, just briefly go through of, uh, some blocks and some of uh, very important uh, logic nodes. So uh, this is the uh, beginning of main logic tree. Here you can see some preparation. It's hide something. This node uh, hides something uh, on this scene. Uh, also you can see um, apply shape case node. Uh, this node uh, apply any shape case if it exists on object's geometry. So logic nodes can deal with shape case. So this uh, node just close uh, troll's eyes. You can see troll behind the main character that sleep. And uh, this is a very important node for this scene. It's a um, uh, variable store node that creates a uh, variable with uh, name quest point and this variable will uh, detect on which stage uh, now uh, quest is uh, proceed. So uh, by default it's set to zero uh, because it's uh, a beginning of the scene. Uh, then you can see play animation that play simple idle animation on the character so it moves a little in the cage and then you can see a switch select node that will wait from the user when he click on a specific object and here you can see a list of this object uh, and before I start to explain uh, these branches 
I want to explain uh, a logic tree that created especially for um, inventory. So this is uh, how it looks. Um, at the bottom of this logic, it just uh, a logic created for a help button that can hint you on a specific object that you can uh, that you must interact uh, with uh, on the stage of the quest on which you now. <laughs> Sorry for my English. <laughs> it's still need to work with. And I'll just push, and uh, it's uh, point me on hook that I need to pick up. And uh, these nodes just uh, compare quest point node with different values and uh, try to understand on which stage uh, you are now and show you a specific object uh, with which you must interact with just with high, uh, with uh, little flashing of uh, blue around of this object. So it's this uh, not so, so interesting to talk about, but we talk about uh, we'll talk about uh, how um, icons of this inventory what made or how logic for these icons are made. So here you can see another uh, variable store. They create a variable with name selected. In this variable, uh, logic will write uh, a name of an icon that are uh, currently selected by the user. And uh, now by default, it's set to I. And the next node, it's set shader node param that uh, can change uh, s uh, that can change a value. Uh, can, can change some parameters in any material. So uh, uh, this node now changes value with name selected in uh, material with name i icon and it set it uh, to value of one. And I sh I'll show you in Blender how this material looks like. So I haven't a good keyboard, so I need to use this uh, view select. Oh, it's okay. I'll show you a material. It's just, uh, it uh, consists of two images, uh, directly uh, Im uh, images that you can see in uh, usual uh, view of this icon, and additional image that creates a blue highlight of this icon. And here I have a special value that switch on this Highlight. So where when a when node uh, shade change, uh, I forgot this name. <laughs> it's very complex. When this node change a parameter in this material, it just change this value to one, and uh, this node started to be highlight. This icon started to be highlighted. I need to return to camera view. Uh, ah, what cameras? Active camera. Sorry. And uh, then further, you can see switch sele another switch select node, and uh, all uh, icons in the inventory uh, added to this list. Uh, so this uh, logic uh, tree will uh, deal with. Uh, only with um, inventory icons, and it will deal with them separately of uh, main logic tree. So they will um, proceed in parallel at the same time. And for example, when uh, the user click on hand icon, 
At first, uh, a node uh, variable store will change value of uh, node selected to hand, so it will be mean for um, logic that uh, now is hand, now, now hand is selected, and then it uh, go through all of materials and set zero in its um, uh, value selected in each of its material. And only in material uh, hand icon it set a value to one. So it will be mean that only this icon will be highlighted. And it happens uh, always when you click on any of this icon. And uh, at the end, it just play a small animation. When you click on any icon, it's uh, scale a little. So just play this animation at the end, so it help user to understand that he click on this object. And so now I can pick up <laughs> a hook And uh, I want now I can show you how this made. I close it a little more. And at one, for, for example, when uh, the user click on pestle, what have happened? Uh, here you can see uh, some checks. Uh, it's a group of conditional jump node. First node checks which stage of uh, quest are now. And the next node uh, compares um, var variable with name selected. Is it equal to hand or not? If it, if it has a uh, right stage of the quest and if a hand has selected, uh, it will play a group of specific animation where uh, on a character and on a pestle object where it is uh, picking up. It also hides, uh, here you can see an object that hides um, a pestle after uh, the character picked it up because he put it in his pocket. So it will be so it need to hide it, and uh, here are some changes in the inventory. So because uh, uh, this object now in the character inventory, uh, this object just uh, reveal pestle icon in his inventory and play a, a small animation to highlight this. And uh, finally. Uh, node variable store just change a stage of a quest. So when uh, then it return, uh, turn it to switch select node. And uh, now if uh, a character click on the pestle, uh, this uh, node will never pass it through uh, true output. It will always uh, pass it through false and return to switch selected and node and uh, this node will wait for another action from a user. And all of these uh, things, all of these branches done the same. So I will not explain every of them. And as you can see, uh, but I you can see, I need to show you <laughs> first, <laughs> sorry. Uh, now I can use a hook on a case. So it's a spoiler. You can find it anywhere yet. As uh, this game too. And now I can use case, the case on the cage. And character get out from the range, and now he can go around freely. And this is a trick. And he can interact with different objects when he goes around. For example, I want to force a character to pick up a troll, 
but he won't. <laughs> uh, or maybe a book. Oh, he don't know what to do with it. <laughs> oh, he's from a village <laughs> and just want to dance. <laughs> as you can see. <laughs> uh, and it's a really trick because here uh, a simple JavaScript code was to use to um, force a character to walk around, but only for these needs. All in other things and interaction between uh, uh, scene was made only using logic nodes. And uh, this uh, uh, think uh, JS callback, special JS callback node do. It just, uh, here you can see a preparation where speed of um, character uh, set up. So what uh, this node JS callback, it connects uh, Huh? What? Uh, this node uh, connect uh, logic node between uh, logic node with uh, any code that you can write using JavaScript on your friend or your uh, own programmist write it to you. So and then after uh, this code uh, do something with uh, done something with uh, any object on the scene, it's return uh, writes uh, to a s common uh, logic nodes. So uh, what happened here? Uh, for example, I have here another switch select node with another list of uh, different objects with which uh, character can inter interact with. For example, I click on the on the spot, and I want from character to go and look at it more closely. And it, so. <laughs> mm, it smells bad. Okay, <laughs> uh, as you can see, there's no sound. It's still in work in progress, so we'll add a sound later. Before. Uh, sorry. Yes, as uh, you can, um, I didn't say th this, but uh, Pergol's tail is made uh, mostly uh, using JavaScript. So uh, only intro scene made uh, using only logic nodes. But uh, the game itself, uh, in a Uh, we still work with it, so each time we made a new application, we improve them and we make it easier to understand. We combine some of them; uh, they still young <laughs> and pretty, <laughs> or maybe not so pretty. <laughs> uh, uh, Please, uh, more loud, I can't hear you. Sorry, I forgot uh, the meaning of opportunity. The word. <laughs> Yes, yes, they all can be done in code. Huh? <laughs> For example, you can uh, write which select node to have the same extended and This node uh, made directly for guys who just uh, 
can't code anything <laughs> for me, for example. Uh, sorry? I, uh, you can see a code? No. I, <laughs> uh, sorry, no, I can't show you because I'm not a programmist. Uh, it was made for this uh, uh, application by programmists. I even didn't know where it placed. Yes, this uh, code just use this special navigation mesh to move a character. So this code just move character by this mesh. And uh, so, uh, can I continue, yes? This is almost, I'm, I'm almost finished. So uh, this code just move uh, character to a specific uh, place, for example, uh, an empty near a specific object, and then uh, common uh, logic nodes uh, do their things and play specific animation. Uh, and as you can see, I just want to show you a scene before the end. As you can see, uh, the scene has a lot of complex uh, materials that are can be exported to the engine without any problem. Some of them has not uh, so many nodes. Some of them are really complex and really uh, Complicated, yes. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, some of objects uh, link it directly to this scene, and some of them uh, made uh, directly in this scene. And I just finished this quest. I need to test taste this portion, or my character need to taste this. Well, something happens. <laughs> so, uh, using uh, logic nodes, you can also play uh, particle system, change something in your material if you prepared it enough. And now I want to escape. So, and if will if all will go, oh. <laughs> Oh, that's all. I think Pedigor escaped from the dungeon. Now I can look around on this scene. So if you have any question, oh, you can ask <laughs> if you still have any question. Okay. <laughs> You can find a lot of examples on our sites, really. You can download SDK and there's a lot of them. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I want to just say a few words uh, before 
you ask something another. Uh, it's very important, uh, this uh, um, point, because you can run your application even on a toaster or a microwave oven if it has a web browser. And it's not a joke, and not a joke. We bought a TV for our needs in our company, and it has an implemented web browser. I don't know what is it, a web browser? <laughs> but we run our applications on its browser, directly on the TV without connecting anything, another. And it was, it, they work really good on it. So it's an era for when uh, uh, everyone will play their uh, lovely games on their toasters, <laughs> on the kitchen. <laughs> Okay. Yes, I want, uh, I can show you a special debug. Uh, uh, um, firstly, uh, debug uh, tool, it's uh, will be your console. So all problems are disp uh, displayed here. So you can find any problem if you have. Uh, uh, the problem with Hammer is just a cache because a browser always caching all uh, application that loads to, to save memory and and it will not happen to when your user will open your application. It's always, uh, not always a problem. It, it's, it's a problem on a Mac with Ubuntu. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but uh, usually it's not a problem. And I want to show you, if you want, a uh, special debug tool. Uh -huh. Not right. Port. Sorry, what this? It's always the key. You can download this and all these things. You can file there. There's a physics, for example, demo physics. I will not show you now. Right now, uh, I want to show you a pedigree style quest and a tools tool and debug panel. So it's loading, loading, oh, it's okay. Uh, here you can see a tool and debug panel, which can help you to test your application for on a performance and different uh, needs. For example, you can see wireframe. You can see how much. Uh, time your GPU spent on rendering different shaders. Uh, yes, we have a debugger. And <laughs> yes, <laughs> have, have. Huh? <laughs> ah, no. <laughs> you can use this as uh, Viz. <laughs> so uh, here you can see a batch view that uh, show you which uh, of object was batched so they was uh, combined into one sub mesh and uh, they will uh, render faster than they was uh, separated objects and so on so any questions okay uh, Ah, you mean um, using logic nodes? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now it's not implemented yet, but it, it's in our to-do list. Right. It will be in the future. Ah, OK. <laughs> uh -huh, okay. State. State machine. State machine buttons. State machine before uh, do the final state in in logic.
uh, what is this panel already in our SDK? No, no. It's it's uh, this. Uh, this is a viewer. It's just for a developer to debug this. So user will see this clean image, even without this uh, FPS showed. It's yeah, just for debug. They can't open it, right? uh, uh. Can no, they can't open it. It's just only for your development. Ah, oh, yes, please. Yes, you can interact with. Uh, we also have have uh, some tutorials on our site how to do this. Another? Yes, please. Uh, sorry, while people are getting out, I can't hear you. <laughs> Ah, it's uh, for debugging just. You, you can switch off it. Uh, it's by default on, but you can switch on, off it if you need. It's just for debug. Yes? Uh, you mean between a uh, few animation? Uh, uh, we already uh, tried to implement this thing and just to move it uh, to our to-do list to do it better. But it's an our to-do list. It will be, I think, made soon. Uh, no, now you can't uh, move individual bones. You can already? Well, I think we can. Uh, we need to <laughs> ask <laughs> our lead programmist about this. No, I, there was used a physic, uh, special parenting to physical object, but you can't move using API, I think. <laughs> you can ask this question on our forum. <laughs> uh, yes? Yes, we have. Uh, full VR support and uh, you can visit Alexander's uh, speech and he will show you a demo that was made especially for VR it's called uh, Space Disaster I think oh, yes <laughs> oh. we uh, haven't bring with us a VR helm but you can test it by your own uh, on our site you can just open an application take your VR and test it it's okay. It will work as well. And next, if it okay. Yes, I understand. Alexander, can you ask about pathfinding?
So I think that's all. If you have a question, we can continue in foyer, I think. So I need to go away. Thank you, thank you.